the fastest car in the world. Zero to 60 in 1.74 seconds, over 1900 horsepower, 100% electric propulsion was made by this guy. A Croatian engineer that you probably have never heard of. An engineer that is now responsible for not only the future of his own brand, but electric supercars from giants like Porsche and Bugatti. But his journey to get there was one that would have broken most people. Now, you'll probably never get to set fire to a supercar, but you can set fire to your bank account. I can't promise that it's ethical, and I certainly can't promise that you won't end up serving hard time. But unlike with the soap, now when you drop your phone, you'll be perfectly fine. Thanks to Dbrand. Dbrand's grip case is precision engineered by heartless robots to ensure maximum protection for their fellow machines. And Dbrand skins can give your phone the personality that you're lacking. Case or no case. Robot City for the artistic edgelords, 100% beef leather skin to match your tasteless car interior, carbon fiber to show how lightweight your brain is, or the new hot off the press something skin to tell the world that you love tech so much that you named your first child Linus. And if you've already got your grip case and skins, you can get screen protectors and even retro dark plates for your PlayStation. Those are actually pretty cool, damn. So go to dbrand.com slash Albon and buy something, because if you pay them, then they'll pay us and it's a win-win for everyone but mostly us dbrand.com slash albon links in the description anyways the engineer behind the car that nearly killed richard hammond is none other than mate rimatz and his story starts in 1988 in what is present day bosnia when he was just three years old widespread violent conflict broke out in mate's home later known as the yugoslav wars the soviet federation of yugoslavia was disintegrated and the rampant bloodshed forced mate and his family to move to Germany. But while free from the conflict at home in Germany, tensions between Europeans continued through the 90s. So just nine years later, his family moved again, this time to Croatia. And with all the moving at a young age, Mate had a hard time adjusting in school. He didn't fit in with the local kids and he was bullied for his Bosnian accent. And so after school, Mate would spend all his time by himself in his family garage, tinkering and exploring the world of electronics and technology. By the time he was halfway through high school, his obsession with tech and most notably cars was consuming every ounce of his time. It got to a point that one of his high school professors, Ivan Vlanic, pushed him to compete in local engineering competitions after seeing his unique capabilities. And it didn't take long for Mate's brilliance to impress the outside world. He won first place at a national level competition after designing a glove that replaced a keyboard and mouse. And when he got to college, Mate's extraordinary mind expanded to the automotive industry. He designed and patented a car mirror that increased blind spot visibility and it wasn't long before a company reached out and bought his patent. His technology was going to be used in production cars and as a college student, that was huge validation for him. And with that small victory pushing him forward, there was nothing stopping Mate Rimas. Of course, he wasn't just designing technology for cars in a lab, he was also a car enthusiast and so he had his own project cars too. Mate bought his first car at 19 years old and it was none other than the iconic 1984 BMW E30. 323i. And he did what any of us would do, he modded it. But unlike me or you at 19, he didn't just cut his springs, throw on some knockoff wheels and install LEDs and call it a build. Mate's 323i was his ticket into racing. And so he dedicated his time and money to making it fast on the circuit. Well, that is, until he blew his engine. But this is where Mate separated himself from everyone else. He didn't just rebuild the motor and he didn't swap in an S38 or a small block Chevy. He stripped the whole damn thing down and converted it to an electric car. And if you thought he was going to race that electric car, well then you'd be right. But let's be real. If you brought your 1985 electric swap car to a track today, you're probably getting roasted right from the driver's meeting. So imagine everyone's face when he did it in 2006. The track bros laughed at him for bringing a washing machine to the racetrack and asked if they could charge their phones with his battery bank of a car. But Mate wasn't phased by jokes. He'd been dealing with clowns like this since he was a kid. And well, he shut him up quick. Because as I'm sure you can now expect from Mate Rematz, 
That BMW was a track monster. He set five FIA and Guinness World Records in that car, records for the fastest acceleration and speed in an EV. And he didn't just leave it the way it was. That electrifying E30 went through seven iterations of mods until he got it just right. It became his life's work and he had made such strides with that EV Beamer that he decided to start his own electric car company at the age of 21. He called it VST conversions, with VST being the formula for speed. And VST did what Mate was already known for. They took consumer vehicles and converted them to electric drive. But it didn't take long for Mate to realize that VST conversions sounded more like a currency exchange than a cutting edge electric car manufacturer. And even though he was a humble kid, some of his friends convinced him that all great cars were named after their founders. So not long after it was founded, VST conversions was renamed to Rimats Automobili. Branding is important after all, and that's why we made these cool shirts. Inspired by our love for the classic JDM videos that got us hooked on cars. You can grab one at our shop linked in the description and help Albon keep bringing car culture to the masses. Now, you might think that this is the part where we talk about how Remats blew up and how Mate's wildest dreams came to life. But even with all that ambition and talent, Mate and Remats Automobili kinda went nowhere. In fact, Mate remained the sole employee at Remats for the next two years. Converting ICE cars into EV just wasn't the huge market that he thought it was. And so Mate realized that he needed to do something different, something bigger, something that was far beyond throwing batteries in an old BMW. But to do something like that, Mate needed help. He needed another brilliant mind to complement his engineering prowess. But it was just him in that Remat's office, so Mate had to take to the Rolodex. And there was one friend that stood out above the rest, Adriano Mudri. Adriano was a designer at GM, and he was a close enough friend to Mate that he knew all about his business and all about Mate's unique mind. So Mate rang him up and asked, Adriano, do you want to build an electric supercar? It was an insane ask, but Adriano knew Mate's capabilities. There was just one issue. Mate was a broke college student, and Adriano wasn't just going to quit his day job for him. So the electric supercar project became their part-time pet, one that they would work on during late evenings and weekends. Naturally, Remats focused on the car's technology, and Adriano focused on the design. All the while, though, Mate's BMW was still making waves at the racetrack. He kept winning races and breaking records, and eventually, the car got attention, serious attention. A Middle Eastern royal family reached out to Remats and offered to be an investor in his company. They had seen his work put to the test and were tantalized by the idea of Mate creating a dedicated sports car. But of course, he didn't have the manpower or the facilities, and that's exactly why a cash injection would be life-changing for the future of Remats. So he took them up on it, and with this newfound cash flow, Mate put a team together that he could trust. A variety of experts, all of whom understood the vision that Mate and Adriano had created. They named the project Concept One, and with the technologies that they were developing, it seemed like only a matter of time before the world would see an extraordinary Remats creation. But as it turned out, behind closed doors, things were not going as well as Mate hoped. The team was talented, yes, but they were inexperienced. And without a solid business background, their company was burning through their cash reserves at breakneck speed. And remember, it wasn't their money. It was the royal family's money. And what Mate didn't realize was the issue with bringing in investment is that you also bring in influence. The investors complained that they were too far away from Remats to keep an eye on the company. And seeing how quickly Remats was spending their money without delivering a single car, the royal family gave Mate an ultimatum. Remats was to pack up in Croatia and operate closer to them, in Abu Dhabi to be exact. And if they didn't, well, then the money taps were shut off. But Mate had made Croatia his home. He had built his entire foundation there despite countless obstacles. And let's not forget, Mate had to flee his home once before, and it wasn't by choice. This time, however, he did have a choice, and his choice was to stay. Money be damned, this was Mate's home. This was Remats's home. And he wasn't just going to leave behind all his friends and employees that had helped build up Remats in the first place. So 
the investors dropped out and Mate was left with the responsibility of himself, his family, his employees, and the concept one. And you see this, this would be the point that most companies would crash and burn. But Mate was a visionary. So he did what any great visionary does. When doors were closed in front of him, he forged his own path. Remats may not have had a finished electric supercar, but they certainly had developed a lot of the technology behind it. And so Mate thought, why can't we do the same, but for other companies? So Remats pivoted and became an automotive technology consulting firm. They started designing and manufacturing batteries, electric motors, and software solutions for other car manufacturers. And in many cases, were fully developing clean slate electric powertrains. And their clients weren't just some no-name manufacturers, these were industry giants like Koenigsegg and Aston Martin. And over the next year, with client after client and project after project, Remats managed to turn themselves around and keep the lights on. No outside investment required. And all that would lead up to 2011, when at just 23 years old, Mate introduced the first official Remats at the 2011 Frankfurt Motor Show. The long-awaited Concept One. The world had never seen anything like it. It was basically the world's first ever fully dedicated electric hypercar, and it really showcased Remats' potential. The four electric motors made one 1,224 horsepower and 1,180 pound-feet of torque. And with an estimated 0 to 60 at 2.5 seconds, there wasn't much else that could beat it. Keep in mind that this was over a decade ago. And with Adriano Mudri now joining Remats full-time and the world beginning to finally recognize Mate's brilliance, Remats finally had the springboard to bring the Concept 1 to life. Of course, it wasn't quite that easy. It took another five years before the production concept one made it to market. And the initial projected run of 88 cars was cut down to just eight. But nevertheless, production was happening. And along with production came significant investment, this time from more legit sources. Everything was finally clicking into place for remats. That is, until Richard Hammond decided to get behind the wheel of one. Oh, I'm quite nervous. It was June of 2017. The Grand Tour was on its second season after a triumphant rise from the ashes of Jeremy Clarkson's Top Gear, Fracas. And the first episode of the series was an expose on the past, present, and future of sports cars, with the future being remats. The boys took to a hill climb in Switzerland, and for most of the day, everything went well. That is, until Hammond's last run in the remats. Towards the end of the hill climb, he approached a corner carrying far too much speed in his Concept 1 and lost the rear end under braking. The car broke through a barrier, slipped down a steep hillside, and then rolled end over end a number of times. The car landed upside down, and emergency crews all ran to pull Hammond out of the wreckage. Thankfully, when they pulled him out, his only injury was a fractured knee. But not long after they pulled him out, the car burst into flames. Just a few moments later, and Richard Hammond would have been no more. It wasn't good press for Remats. Sure, it was Hammond's fault for crashing the car, but with EV fires already in the automotive zeitgeist, it was a big blemish on Remats's reputation to have a burning Concept One plastered all over the front page of dozens of publications. But as you know by now, Mate wasn't the type of person to lose faith. People always looked down on him. People always counted him out, but he always kept pushing. And so they kept trudging along. And in 2018, Remats introduced the Concept 2 to the world. This was a step up in every way from the previous generation. A hyper EV with 1,914 horsepower and a zero to 60 time of 1.85 seconds. Not to mention a full suite of autonomous capabilities and 400 miles of range on a full charge. It was insane, seriously unbelievable specs, genuinely. Unbelievable, many people just did not believe that a small company from Croatia could produce a car that most of the world's major manufacturers couldn't. That is, until a few months later, when Remats got the validation that they had always deserved. Porsche, yes, that Porsche announced that they would be a leading investor 
in Rematz's future. Mate would remain majority shareholder, of course, and Porsche's investment would lend them access into Rematz's expertise in developing world-leading EV technologies. And for Mate, this was the boost that they needed to take the Concept 2 forward. And not long after, they renamed it to something that better symbolized the ethos of an electric hypercar. The Rematz Nevera, the Croatian word for a violent lightning storm. Rematz's new Porsche money also helped them build a manufacturing facility for the Nevera in June of 2020. And while they were getting ready for Nevera production, Rematz took perhaps its biggest step yet. Porsche, as many of you know, is part of the Volkswagen Group. And you know who else is part of the Volkswagen Group? Bugatti. And Bugatti, once considered the cutting edge of hypercars, found itself looking old-fashioned in the age of electrification. So, in an effort to push hypercar development, Porsche created a new joint venture, Bugatti Rematz, a collaborative effort to take Bugatti's 100-plus year history and combine it with the technological advancement of the Rematz Group. And along with the joint venture came hundreds of millions of dollars of new funding. By August of 2022, production at Rematz was underway and Nico Rosberg became the first owner of a Rematz Nevera. They had created the greatest electric hypercar ever made. And to further prove their own dominance in the space, Rematz went on to top even its own ridiculous spec sheet, taking a production Nevera from zero to 60 in just 1.74 seconds and setting a quarter mile time of 8.25 seconds, not only making it the fastest electric vehicle, but one of the fastest production cars in the world. And to think, all of this started with just a boy cast out of his country, alienated by his peers, who devoted his time to curiosity and learning, who with enough time and enough struggle, achieved things greater than even he could ever dream of. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to pick up a shirt at our store linked in the description. You can also hit the link to our Patreon and join us there to get early access content. And you can join us on Discord and hang out with us on the daily. I'll see you guys in the next one.